Don't start it up. I mean, I don't usually get to start them up after I've made them. I might have to edit out the process of starting it so no one steals the thing. Right, okay. Don't drop the thing off it though. <laughs> Down here, this is the exhaust the car was fitted when we got it. And to the untrained eye initially, it doesn't look like there's much wrong with it. But I can tell you from experience, this exhaust won't last particularly long. And the reason is, stainless is inherently, not brittle, but it likes cracking. You have a, a lot of trouble with stainless exhaust cracking and breaking, especially hangers. And there's no flexibles in this exhaust whatsoever. Both of these flanges bolt onto the manifolds coming off the engine and they don't separate anywhere. There's no joints, there's no clamps, there's no nothing. And ideally, what you want is one of these flexibles because engines move cars move, it, everything's vibrating and the last thing you want with a stainless exhaust is everything vibrating and nowhere for it to go. So on our exhaust and any other exhaust that's reputable, you'll have flexibles like this so that everything moves nicely and everything's got give and you're not giving the chance to fatigue and crack and come to bits. So up there we've got two, two of these. Also, with these, I mean, this exhaust does have cats, luckily, um, as does ours. Um, and inside catalytic converters, there's like a honeycomb structure. You might even be able to... There you go. You might be able to see the light through that. Um, and inside here, there's a lot of precious metals. Um, so platinum, rhodium, um, stuff like that. And when all the nasty exhaust gases go through these, they get heated up and well, it's in the name, it's a catalyst. It, it's sort of, there's a chemical reaction with the metals when it gets hot and it turns all the harmful carbon dioxides, nitrogens, stuff like that, burns them off and turns them into something a bit nicer for the planet without slagging whoever's done this off. The weld is not particularly nice, it's not very shielded with any amount of gas, so like, there's no pretty colours in them. It's probably very sugary on the inside, which again, probably susceptible to cracking. And it's not the best, it doesn't flow very well and it's just, it's probably been made out of bits that someone had laying around. Um, if we go to the back, stuff like merges. Here we've got what they've come up with, which is basically just a bend and then a piece grafted on. And you, yeah, if you look down there, there's just a hole cut into the side of that pipe. And any amount of gas that's going through that is absolutely gonna wanna follow the path of least resistance down here. And there's not really much gonna come out of there so not ideal and if we move on to what we've done i'll show you what should be done so starting off at the manifolds up here comes straight off the manifold with his o2 sensors and down into a pair of cats on each bank and um, we run heat shields on our cats when we can when we've got the room because they get extremely hot, because that's how they work. And everything around them will just melt otherwise. It's made of plastic, so that's a fairly good, uh, fairly good thing to have. Um, and then, yeah, we've, we've got flexibles in our system. So everything's got a chance to move. The engine can move. Because it's all mounted on rubber, it's going to move. So that's where things start cracking. And uh, down here, again, we've got V-bands. Um, so you can take this exhaust to bits very easily, very, very serviceable, and it's just a nice way of doing it. Like, there's not even a joint in there in that one. 
Um, I mean, I'd at least be happy to see something like a flange or a slip joint, but there's not even a joint at all. So, so yeah, very serviceable, very nice. Just, it's what you want when you're doing a proper job. And then we've got a silencer uh, with a Y-piece merge in it to merge the two banks together. Um, and then, so that will knock quite a bit of noise out of it, even though it's a bit loud. Um, back here, we're stepping up to three inch, again with another V-band. So serviceability, getting it in bits easy, it's just what you want. Um, and yeah, we come up over the axle and in here, don't know, you might be able to see through here, Ben. There's, um, there's our split for the two tips. And unlike the one on the floor, it's a, it's a knife edge split in there. So that is a completely unbiased 50-50 split. You're gonna get even amounts of gases going through that to both sides of the car. And it's just, it's the way to do it if you're gonna do it properly. And under here, we go behind the axle and the diff and pop up in that corner of the rear cross member and out of the rear cross member through our trims. And again, through here, we sneak through there and we come out through the same hole on the other side and we have this quad exit. And yeah, it's a really nice exhaust system, really nice way of doing it. And it's, it's just how they should be done. Nothing's skimped, everything's welded properly. And it's a system that's going to last. It's not something that's going to need replacing in 12 months after it's all fallen to bits. It's something that will stay with the car forever and yeah, hopefully Paul's going to enjoy it. For a Christmas haircut, have I seen? I just re I've rescheduled it because I was away this morning.
We are working on a fuel tank, well, yeah. a bit. What, yeah, are, no, what are the didn't. challenges of doing it on this vehicle? Um, previous ones we've done, one tens, um, a bit more room to work with. Um, doing a 90 now, so there's a lot less room between the wheels and the rear cross member, and the length of the chassis between them, so it's a lot harder. There's not as much room to be gained or gained in a normal way. Like the last one, we made it deeper and go up and over the axle a little bit. This one, there's not the depth in it front to back. So there's, there's not as much late yearage gain by just dropping the bottom down. So on this one, we're doing some little tanks that come out of the sides and under usually where the anti-roll bar would mount up. Um, and then a lot wider across the back for the depth in here and and again deeper but it's um it's just finding all the wasted space really and trying to gain everything that you can without going too daft and other things not working around it so at the moment we're just mocking it all up in cardboard before we start cutting any aluminium up and wasting anything um but yeah i think i'm fairly got the shape now i should be able to do these little end tanks around here and underneath, um, we're going around the quad exit exhaust. So anyone that orders these eventually on the online shop, no matter what exhaust you've got or anything, this will work. It'll be fine. Just be a bolt on item. Um, so yeah, hopefully today we'll start cutting some aluminium and we'll have sort of the first prototype done really. What do you reckon, Louis? Looks good, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Sexy. Mm -mm, yeah, this is the drop compartment. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we doing a new tank for this vehicle? Um, the main reason is a bit more fuel in it, so Paul can go a bit further. This originally would have come with a Puma engine. Um, now we've got an LT1, and there's not going to be the miles to gallon it used to have. Like that's not going to be what it used to be. So. The only way to really go further is have more fuel on board. And um, yeah, so we're just making the tank bigger basically so that trip to trip is not always at the petrol station. So yeah, so this is a normal standard 90 tank. Um, I mean, it's fairly as big as you can go anyways, really. So it's, it's very hard to try and make them bigger because there isn't a lot of space to put anything else in. But we're having a go. So on the sides here, these will come out sideways and we'll game a bit of volume in there. At the back, that'll go up and over the axle when it's on full bump. So you gain all that in there. And, um, and the, the difference of these in a standard plastic tank, you've got all the rounded edges on everything and everything's very rounded and you lose a lot of volume in the radiuses. So because these are angular corners, all the liquid is going to go right into the apex of the corners. So you're gaining volume everywhere doing it like that compared to the standard plastic blow molded, blow molded stuff. Um, so yeah, it, it is very hard to say how much we're going to gain, but we're aiming for at least like a third more, maybe more than that, just so it's worth worth doing really because no one wants five litres more we want you know a good amount really so yeah next we'll start cutting in aluminium and see how much we can gain so just keep going with it and make it better and better and the other main benefit of building these tanks other than the volume is once we've got these designed and prototyped we're going to be sending these to ProTech and ProTech's going to build us as own pump and sensors and everything and anything that goes inside this tank so it's purpose built for these engines. There's never ever going to be not enough fuel for it, not enough pressures, not enough anything. And also 
for people like the overlanding boys and stuff like that, these are going to be dual pump. So that ring will weld in the top of his tank and then it'll just be a standardised unit that we'll get from ProTech that just bolt in there. And yeah, daft stuff like if one pump goes down, you flick a switch, you put the other pump on. It's nothing new technology wise, but it's, it's handy and it's nice, you know, especially if you're in the middle of nowhere with one of these things. And yeah, it's just, it's something proper for it. We're not modifying Land Rover pumps and trying to make them good enough. It's a purpose built thing for a purpose built build. So yeah, it's, it's just the right way of doing things. And if we're gonna do stuff like this, it's got to be the best out there. There's, there's no one else gonna have something like this. So, yeah, it'll be good when it's done. Yeah, oh yeah, it fits. Yeah. Let's see what it looks like. Are we going to bring the braces off that situation? Well, either crush tubes through it or bring a something around mm. the outside of it and then cradle it and then if you want to bring like if you do it out of something sturdy enough you can bring the tow bar mount down to it an anti-roll bar mount yeah the trouble is you don't want to do all out here because they're not all going to have these bumpers on are they no so it's you almost need to see what it's like with a um, standard tow frame on as well it's a tough one isn't it I don't mind doing that. I don't want to have a different tape length for different size, you know what I'm saying? So Project Goliath, today we've been fabricating these. For those of you in the Land River world who recognise these plates, these are anti-roll bar plates. If you come under here, these are going to be living under here. And as you can tell, this is our oversized tank. The monster that it is, 150 litres in this bad boy. This plate is going to live on top of here and we're going to actually make some reinforced spaces to allow the anti-roll bar to sit back neutral. And what we're finding now with lifted cars like this one on airbags is that the anti-roll bars are sitting at some horrific angles. So now we're creating a spacer to go in between there and the original chassis mount to allow the anti-roll bar to be remounted in a more ideal location. So if anyone wants some of these, we're actually doing a DIY kit. It'll probably be about 150 plus of that, powder coated, ready to bolt on. So keep us posted. So what you see here is our latest product to the workshop. So this is a Fox steering dampener. We've got various options available guys. We've got black Bill Stein advanced dampeners. We've got, but what I want to talk about is this, this one. So we've actually just tried this on one of our own cars and it responded very, very well. So you know what, we're going to offer this. And if people want the Fox treatment all around, they can have the Fox treatment. But what we have got, these are the 2.0s remote reservoir adjustable. So you see that little clicker there? We can basically, change the compression rebound by doing this left and right so if you feel like your car is bouncing too much or it's actually too stiff you can actually back it off or adjust it tighten it up as such right i'm going to talk you through what's going on here so this car here is going to have our m57 to mt82 adapter as you see up here this has had the full tough coat treatment underbody protection everything inside here this is our adapter chassis so you'll notice this set of mounts here that's bolted in so our mounts bolt into this here. So if you were to order this chassis from Marsland that anybody can do, our mount kit literally bolts straight to it. And as we come further back, Bruno's been getting these prepared. So when we rebuild chassis guys, we don't just bolt on the crusty old parts. You'll notice stainless steel fixings everywhere. You'll notice galvanized components. We send these away guys, we get them galvanized. Sometimes we've been recycling, we've been using older parts of cars. You know, if they're not rotten guys, we send them away 
they get acid dipped, then they get blasted, and then they get galvanized. So there's no harm in recycling parts, you know, look after the planet and all that jizz to make things reusable. And as you notice, these are second hand, this center member is second hand, and they all look like new. And the best bit is they've got a coating to galvanize, so it can last a lifetime. These are our latest SMC wheels. We're actually stockless of these wheels, guys. So if you want some 20 inch wheels, we can send you some out. And we're happy to wrap them in any tire combination that you want. And if you want to set these tires, all wheels or wheel and tire combos, we can do 18 inches, we can do 20 inch options. Those wheels look fantastic. If you look here, you'll notice in the back of these wheels, you see some monstrous calipers. That is our 18 inch monster brake kit. We have just finished a 20 inch version, Radical 2. And next episode, you will see those absolute monsters in the flesh. So keep following for that. And just look at this car. So this car has been blasted, powder coated. Every single component has been redone or remade. We just can't, you know, there's nothing that we haven't touched or thought about. So what we've got here, guys, this is a winch bumper that we've put together and the client Scott asked for our crinkle finish and we love it. So just check out how it's turned out. And our friends at Goodwinch have given us this TDS 9.5 ton monstrous winch. Got to get him out the, the wet sloppy stuff if he ever gets stuck in it. So the Scram 90 is nearing completion. And as you'll see in here, this is, we've moved on to the insides now. So we've gone with an Alcantar headlining. In the head, above here guys, we've sound deadened it to the max. So silent coat is everywhere. You'll notice behind these panels, the tub will be getting done, behind the seats will be getting done, everywhere will be lined in rubber. This car's got to be versatile and usable. This is heading to Africa. It's actually booked in September next year to do the Scram edition again. And he's gonna go in absolute style compared to last year. On the back of this car, guys, we've not used an LRE carrier. We've actually used a Nakintenga wheel carrier. And if you look down here, we've gone with this support here. Nakintenga made this beautiful support because it stops this carrier bouncing around. I will be designing my own version soon enough that's actually got a big locking handle because these cars take a sheer beating, especially when you're doing 70 miles an hour across the desert. So we've got the mounts back from the laser cutters and for those of you that are Cummins crazy, you'll notice that is a totally bolt-in Cummins engine mount kit. And that is to a Dodge Ram 2500 engine side. So we've developed these bolt-in ones for our adapter chassis. So those of you out there that are building a ground up build, if you look here as well, that is a bolt-in plate. And the one on this side is also a bolt-in plate. And those of you in the Land Rover world will recognize this mount. as a 300 TDI engine mount. So we've gone for bigger, bulkier, to take these monstrous engines and these monstrous torque. What do you want for Christmas this year? Do you know what I don't know? You're gonna have to prime me on that one. 100 pound budget. £100 budget? Oh, no, we're knackered now. What have you asked Santa for? Uh, I've been a naughty boy, so nothing. <laughs> um, what do I want? Peace and quiet would be nice. Not to get mithered would be another one. I agree, actually. Oh, yeah. 200 200 Jeremy? Yeah? What do you want for Christmas this year? No, no. 500 500 Anything. Sky's the limit. What do you want for Christmas this year? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no idea. You know what, you and Tom, useless. What do you want for Christmas this year? A haircut. <laughs> <laughs> yep, fair play. That'll do. There's one thing that you want, or could do with, might be handy. What do I want for Christmas? I don't know. No idea. Not very fussy. Anything will do. Yeah. Chocolate orange or something. Surprise me. What do you want for Christmas this year? A twin needle sewing machine for the sewing room. Any reason why? Because I need one. You need one. There we go. <laughs> sure. Ah. Oh, oh, oh. You don't have these in your toolkit. These are really good. They're off snap-on. 
Um, unlike the normal UJs, there's a small one. Unlike the normal UJs, which are a bit clunky when you're trying to use them, these work pretty much all the way around. Really good bits of kit. So that's what you want? Yeah. What do you want for Christmas? I want a new Dremel. And what's the Dremel for? For grinding stuff, isn't it? And cool. buffing and... Right. So, Chris, what do you want for Christmas? I want a day off. Yeah, well, that's a fair <laughs> one. Yeah, okay. No, I don't know. Why, right, what? Christmas is coming. Staying up late, looking up the window. What in the heat? Hey, we've got four outfits. Feels like for you, no, Tom. Here you are. Hey, feel like that. Smart. We're going to get you an elf suit as well, don't we? Think it's budget. Can you try and get an independent How's it looking? Hey! Good! Can't see the tinker. You can't see that anyway. <laughs> Another Bruno. That's normal, you know, it's like me. You're not going to be fine. Susan! It's going to deliver your sewing machine by over that. <laughs> Come here, big lad. Hey, I'll tell you what, me So that's it for our Christmas special, guys. Thanks again for watching. Do not forget to subscribe. Do not forget to like and tell all your friends. Anyway, have a fantastic Sunday. Have a fantastic Christmas, guys. And we really appreciate all the love and I hope you appreciate the effort I've made to get in this, this suit and the plonker that I love. Anyway, see you again soon, guys. Bye-bye.